In this tutorial, we're going to explain how to shrink an original part down to 50% of its original size using our Shrink It rubber. Now, Shrink It is a rubber that's activated by water, so it's very moisture sensitive and you have to be careful to keep it sealed up when not in use. And on the side of the bottle, there's a table that will tell you how many parts of water to mix with Shrink It to get varying uh, levels of shrinkage in your final cast part. Now for this particular part, we're going to cast it one to one to get about 50% shrinkage from the original size of the part. And the way it works is shrink it as a single component and water is the catalyst and specifically ice water. So you'll notice we're dispensing about two ounces of shrink it and then we're going to add two ounces of ice water. So in that red cup to the left there, you see we have ice water, and that's important because that ice water will buy you some extra time. Now, obviously you wanna be careful not to get ice cubes in your mix, but uh, we're going to pour out two ounces of water and then stir that up. Now remember that shrink it, since it is a uh, water catalyzed, it sets up very fast. So we only have about 45 seconds to mix it and pour it. And I recommend if you're doing a really large piece to have several people mixing up batches of shrink it and pouring those all at the same time because it sets up much like alginate, it's almost instantaneous. So once you get that poured in, and the nice thing is since most of it's water, it pours like water. So it's very low viscosity and very easy to get a bubble free part. You can typically demold your part in about 10 to 15 minutes. And once it's cured, it has the consistency of like a hard boiled egg. And one of the reasons we use this very soft silicone mold was to help demold it because it is somewhat fragile. Since most of it is water based, you do wanna be very careful with that part and it is ideal uh, to cast into silicone molds versus urethane molds. Now once you've cast your part, it's a good idea to put it in a dehydrator. You can let it dry out at room temperature, but it works much better if you can actually put it in a dehydrator. And uh, this particular part we were able to shrink down in about a day using a dehydrator. Uh, remember that thicker cross section parts will take much longer. If you're uh, casting like a full head, sometimes you might even need to poke some holes in it or uh, cut some notches in it because if the moisture can't get out of the middle of the cast, it'll go through, through some crazy distortions on its way to shrinking down. So make sure that uh, you take that into account if you're molding really large size pieces. It may take uh, over a week for that to shrink down completely. Now here we're just rolling out some water-based clay to seal that uh, uh, where the ear meets the baseboard there. And just to clean up the uh, edge of our mold so our rubber doesn't get underneath our cast. And this is just a quick and dirty mold because most of the time when you're molding a shrink it part like this, it will be to make a clay pattern or something later on. Uh, because usually this is a, an intermediate step to a bigger process to uh, make a display piece or something else that you've shrunk down and sometimes that requires re-sculpting. So in this case we're just going to make a quick dump mold using some Plat Seal Gel Tin and for that we're just going to hot glue this uh, mixing cup that we've cut down over the top. And it's important to note that because this is a urethane rubber and a fairly exotic urethane rubber at that, it's not all platinum silicones are going to work up against this surface. So it's important to, if you're new to this process, test a few different materials out and see what works best for you. One of the reasons we chose gel tin for this process was it cures really fast and that allows it to not be inhibited by that urethane rubber surface. So uh, a couple of the rubbers that work good for this process is Plat Seal gels like the gel tin or gel 25 and also the 7110. All of those are fast enough that cure inhibition typically isn't an issue. Now we're releasing it with some 2500 spray release and we're ready to pour our mold. Now, uh, if you're unfamiliar with the process of mixing and pouring gel tin, check out some of our other videos. We're just gonna give you a quick overview of this part of the process. But basically, this is just some gel tin. We mixed up about uh, 200 grams, uh, 100 grams of A, 100 grams of B and then poured that over our pattern. And the nice thing with gel tin is you have a five minute pour time and a 30 minute demold. So this is great for these kind of pattern molds when you need a uh, part relatively fast. We can pour that and 30 minutes later, ready to demold it and start making resin parts. 
Now this, even though this is a fast mold, this still is a good mold and will work well for producing dozens of resin parts. But if we needed to, we could use this to pour up a clay positive and then use that clay positive to re-sculpt that original, modify it if we need to, and then remold it and make a more uh, permanent production mold off of that part. Now here we're just cutting off that uh, cup mold and demolding our original part. And you'll notice that our uh, ear, our original shrink it ear, is in good condition. So we could easily mold that again if we wanted to. And now that we've demolded that ear, we're ready to cast resin parts into our mold. Now because this is such a thin section part, the, the base of the ear is fairly thick, but the uh, edges of the ear now, because it's shrunk, are very thin. And to make sure we capture all of that detail, we're going to cast this up in Easy Flow 60, which is a very low viscosity casting resin. So it's ideal for pouring up thin section parts like this. And remember that Easy Flow 60 has about a two and a half minute working time, it's 70 degrees and uh, about a 30 minute demold time, depending on the cross section of the part. So there we're just pouring it into the mold, and you notice I filled it up about halfway and squeezed it to help force those air bubbles out, and then filled it up the rest of the way. And if you're new to resin casting, be sure to check out our other videos, because we have a lot that go way more in detail about resin casting. This is just a, a very quick overview. But there you see our bubble-free part, of our ear and our bubble-free mold ready to produce lots of little casts of ears. And there's the original on the left with the shrunk version on the right. And there you have the basic method for using shrink it to shrink parts. And of course you can find shrink it and our other specialty casting rubbers like PT Flex and our new uh, expanding rubber all on our web store at brickintheyard.com. And of course we'll put links in the video description.